What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another video where we are going to be discussing England 2, Germany 0. What a result. Oh, you want fantasy football stuff? Alright, I guess we can do some fantasy football. We're not just going to be discussing England, although we will be talking about them because they are through to the quarterfinals. And I do think they're probably going to provide uh, the basis for a lot of our transfers and wild cards. But we're not, not just going to solely be talking about that game where we beat Germany 2-0, uh, two goals, one from Sterling, one from Kane, no goals conceded. We're not going to be talking about that, right? We're just going to be talking about wild cards, and then we're going to be talking about hits and captaincy and strategy and all that good stuff. And then tomorrow we'll do team selection. So if you enjoy it, Please do give it a like, hit that subscribe button if you're new around here, and apologies to anyone that's watching this that's German. Okay, so the main portion of this video before we get into the wildcard draft is going to be on this screen. So we're going to be talking about players and teams to target, where to focus your um, transfers on, and also talking about hits and stuff like that, as well as captaincy um, too. So this is a fairly badly drawn graphic for what's going to happen next. So the two teams on the left are the teams that will then face each other in the semi-final. So it'd be one of Switzerland or Spain versus one of Belgium or Italy. That'll be the semi. That'll be the quarters into the semis. Then obviously on the right, you've got the same thing. So one of Czech Republic and Denmark will face one of Ukraine uh, and England. And obviously you hope to have a bunch of players that go through, unlike the last 16 to the quarterfinal. Um, so we'll come on to which players to target and how much risk to put into certain teams and which which kind of teams you probably want to ignore a little bit in just a second. And like I said, I will have a wildcard draft after I talk about all that stuff. And then team selection tomorrow where I'll talk more specifically about which transfers I'm focusing on. But I'll obviously kind of touch on that when I'm talking about this anyway. So the first thing is hits, right? A lot of people are looking to take hits because if you haven't got the wild card, you're probably in a similar situation to me where you've got like six players that are out. So I've got four Netherlands, two French players that are just out. They're not definitely not going to play. Then I've also got De Bruyne. So I ended up going De Bruyne and Immobile in the end. I think that was I think I was looking at that or Lukaku and Insigne. And I stuck to um, Immobile and... And De Bruyne, I think I actually put Insigne in in the end anyway. Um, and De Bruyne might be injured. And also Brady, the rumour is that he's not going to start. And Chiesa will come in instead of him. And I think that will probably be one of the only changes to the Italy team. So there's problems there. That's potentially eight players that aren't going to play. Now, in terms of hits, I'm obviously focusing them on the French and the... Um, the Netherlands players, because they're definitely not playing. With De Bruyne, he may start the Italy game, and if he doesn't, if they get through and he's fit, he'll probably start the semi-final. So he's not probably worth using a transfer for, unless you're not in as bad a position as me, right? If you've got less players that are definitely out, then maybe you do use a transfer on De Bruyne, go for someone with a better fixture that can save you some money that you can then use elsewhere. And with Berardi, I'm definitely not. The thing is, in this game, 120 minutes, if it goes to extra time, it counts, right? And in that scenario, there's a lot more chance of someone like him coming on, like Chiesa did in the last game, uh, if it goes to 120 minutes. And I do think Belgium and Italy could be quite close. Um, so that's something to think about. So the six transfers I'm looking at making will be uh, possibly up to six, by the way. I'm not saying definitely six, but France and Netherlands. Now, to take a hit, I said there's a few things you need to do. One, how many do you need to get up to 11 players? I think you, you need at least 11 players. It's worth taking hits to do so. I do think there's a case to be made to take further hits, potentially. Um, one... If you're bringing in a player from, say, like an England, maybe a Denmark, maybe Spain as well, where you think they're the favourites to get through, and therefore not only will they get a quarterfinal match, but they'll also get a semi-final match. And I know a lot of people have been burnt now because we thought the Netherlands were going to get through. We thought that France were definitely going to get through. But like I said in yesterday's videos, you just got to keep making those good decisions. And backing the favourites is probably the best way to go. And hopefully there aren't too many upsets, right? Um... And the other option is captaincy as well. So two of the players I'm thinking of bringing in, which are Morata and Kane, would probably be my captains for those two days. Now, you have to remember, um, we only get two captains now. None of this four or even five day, uh, sorry, five different captains like in match day one. You're going to get one captain from Switzerland, Spain, Belgium, Italy. And then you're going to get one captain from Czech Republic, Denmark, Ukraine, and England the next day. Now, I look at those matchups. I probably want to ignore Belgium, Italy. I'm not quite sure how it will go. My feeling would be it will be quite tight. Uh, we saw Belgium, when they got the goal, they did a lot of defending, right? And, and we know Italy can defend as well. 
So those those two teams, I think it'll be tight. So I'm looking for a captaincy from Spain or Switzerland. And Spain are the favourites, okay? I think they have played better. Switzerland, they did really, really, really well to get back into that France game and ultimately win it on penalties. But Spain are still the favourites. And Morata has started every game. So he's the one that I'm looking at. What I will say, though, we will get the Spanish lineup before the deadline, okay? That's the first game of the match day. So for the quarterfinals, we will know the Spain lineup. And that's huge because they have rotated a lot. You've got Torres, Olmo, Sarabia, etc. Morata. Moreno didn't even get on, I don't think, in the last game. And yet he started the previous two. So Enrique is not afraid to mix things up. But once you know who starts for Spain, that is probably the best captain. There's nothing to say that Immobile, Insigne, Lukaku, etc. If they start, which most of those players will... For that game they couldn't do something but they do have a tougher game it's as simple as that right and we're trying to look at this objectively right i'm trying to forget the england bias a little bit so spain are probably the captain for me it's morata right now i know people think that's crazy but he's who i'm looking at he's the center to everything they do going through the middle um and he does get chances just have to hope it's one of those days where he doesn't frustrate on the other side for me, it's probably an England player or a Danish player, right? Czech Republic, again, really well done for getting through, etc. I don't want to sound patronising, right? But people didn't think they were going to get through. I didn't. Uh, and they've got all this way. But I, I do think Denmark are dangerous. So you could look for a Danish captain, maybe someone like Mailer, if you want to go for a defender, capable of getting attack and returns. Braithwaite or someone like that, possibly. But I think the captain has to be from England on that day. So Kane or Sterling are really your only bets. Because although Saka started the last game... And I may transfer him in. I am thinking about it because he's cheap. Um, I just don't know if I'll be 100% confident that will happen. Southgate might mix it up. He might mix it up. He hasn't changed too much. But we've seen he's gone from... I mean, I say he hasn't changed too much. He's gone from a 4-3-3 to a 3-4-3. So he's not afraid to mix up formations. But personnel don't change too much. It could be Greedish on the left, Sterling on the right. But I just think Sterling has done more than enough to keep his place on the left. So Grealish is fighting for that spot. I just don't think he's going to get in from the start. So Saka, who's done nothing wrong in his two games, will probably start again. But there's a little bit of a tighter turnaround this time. And Southgate does have a lot of players he could play there instead. right? And arguably it's an easier game in the quarterfinal than we had in the semifinal as well. And I don't even know if he's going to change formation. Because if Denmark get through, that's another back five. And he might match them up as well. But I do think the best captaincy comes from England. Kane or Sterling. Um, obviously, I'll leave it up to you to decide who to go for. So, like I said, just to, just to kind of summarise. Hits, I think, if you're getting up to a full 11. Or you're bringing in a captaincy. Or you're bringing in a player from a team where you think they're going to go through. Then that's probably okay. In terms of who I would be targeting, I think it has to, for your trans, I think it has to be Spain and England. Because Denmark, are, people have probably already got one or two Danish players, like Mela and maybe Damsgaard or someone like that, perhaps a forward as well, or instead of. I don't know if you want to go all in on that, right? England should, by the bookies, right, by the odds, I mean, England are favourites to win the whole thing now, right, just because of their route. But England should beat Ukraine. And bear in mind, England played 90 minutes where they were aggressive, but they had so much of the ball. I don't think they exerted a lot of energy, really. Uh, I know Phillips and Rice, etc., were pushing a lot, Saka and Sterling, but I think Ukraine has to play 120 minutes. I mean, even though they scored at the end, it was it was on like 120 minutes. It was in extra time of extra time, pretty much. Um, so that would have taken a lot out of them. They also got quite a few injuries as well, so we'll have to see if those knocks are okay. So I think targeting England and Spanish players is good. I think with Belgium and Italy, you've got to start spreading your risk a little bit. So for me, I've already got like, I think four Italian players, Immobile, Insigne, Berardi, and uh, Spinazzola. I'm not going to add a fifth, all right? That just feels like asking for trouble. But I might add another Belgian player because I've only got De Bruyne. So maybe adding one more Belgian player. And if they do go through, sure, I lose four Italy players, but I still have two Belgians and I've got five transfers to fix it. So it's not too bad. So, if you're targeting teams, I think it has to be Spain and England. Maybe branch out a little bit with uh, Belgium and Italy, but only go for like one or two max. And I think the same for Denmark. Czech Republic, if you're if you're not got a wild card, I, I personally would completely avoid. I just think Denmark will go through there. Anyway, right, I think that's most of it covered, what people are looking at. Let's talk about the wild card. Okay, so this is a wild card draft that I have put together. Now, I'm not saying you have to go for this exact draft. And you definitely have to determine, you as a manager, how aggressive do you want to be 
or do you want to play more risk adverse? And that is going to depend on, or that's going to kind of factor into which players you then put into your side, right? So for example, in this one, I've got four England players. Now, it's not because I'm English and I think England are going to win the whole thing. I think England are just brilliant, but they probably do have the best run to the final possible, right? And are probably, or they are odds on favour, okay? Let's just say that. I'm not saying they're going to go and score loads of goals. I'm not saying they're definitely not going to concede. But they're the favourites to beat Ukraine. And then whoever wins at Denmark or Czech Republic, they would be the favourites to win that. So they are most likely by the odds to get through to the final. Whereas on the other side, Belgium or Italy are going to get through. But they've got to play each other, so that's already tough. And then they're probably going to have to play Spain, which is also tough. And obviously Spain are more likely to get through to the semi-final, but then they've got to play one of Belgium or Italy. So it's tougher for them. So that's why I've got four England players. If you wanted to play it more risk-adverse, you would probably only go for three England players, maybe three Spanish players. Bearing in mind, we're going to know the team for Spain before before it kicks off, uh, or before the deadline, sorry, and then go for one or two from kind of every other nation. Right, just to spread your risk a little bit, and then whoever goes through, you've got a good core of players, and you've got five transfers to fix it anyway. So that would be the risk adverse. So, for example, right, uh, and one quick thing by the way, the semi-finals, it's it's the winner of one or two that go through. So the thing I like about going for like three Spanish players, you'll know you'll know the lineup here for this week, and you'll also know it here as well, because this semi-final will be the other side. This will be England's, um, and then Denmark or Czech Republic or Ukraine, right? It'll be that side of the draw. So going for Spanish players seems like a good thing. Now, I've got basically the four main England players. I think in attack, you can really only go for Kane and Sterling. And then in defence, I've got Pickford, goalkeeper, obviously, and then Stones um, as well. If you had extra money, you could go for Shaw. It does look like he's going to keep his place on that left side. He did not do himself any um, harm in the way that he played yesterday. He also got one of the assists as well. Um, so he played really well in the end. So you could go for sure if you've got a little bit more money. But basically, you've got two goalkeepers from either side. You've got Spain, who's Simon. I not he did make a mistake in the last game, but I think he'll be he'll be kept in again. We will know that lineup for sure. So it doesn't hugely matter. Um, but I think Spanish keeper into Pickford is probably the best way because for Denmark you've already got cover for the defense in Mela, right? So I think Pickford's good, but I've got four English players there. I've only got two from Italy, so Insigne because we know Brady's not necessarily nailed. Even if Chiesa comes in, will he definitely keep his place? We're not going to know that. Plus they're playing Belgium, so it's difficult. Um, and for Belgium because of Hazard and De Bruyne's injury uh, status at the moment, I've gone for Lukaku. I do think Morata is a good pick. I know people will laugh at it. I know they get frustrated with watching him because he's offside or he misses chances, but he always gets those chances and he's going to put them away eventually. So I think he is a decent option up front as well. And then my other Spanish players, I've actually got f four as well. So I've got four Spanish and four English. So Simon in goal, Eric Garcia. Again, we will know who's definitely playing centre-back, but he started the last game. So that is worth looking at, right? Uh, and then Sarabi in there as well because he's quite cheap. Now, if you wanted to be a bit more risk adverse, you could downgrade or so, uh, sorry, change one of the English players and one of the Spanish players for players from other teams. Now, whether that's Kane you want to get rid of or Sterling or Sarabia or Morata, I'll leave that up to you. But possible changes to this team, um, you could go ba basically the one team we've not covered, or sorry, the two teams we haven't covered are Ukraine uh, and Czech Republic right so ukraine you got yaramchuk maybe yarmolenko etc um who could go there zinchenko maybe in defense depends how much you want to back them against england right I, I would be tempted just to back england but that's how i played the last round it didn't go well but if you're that kind of manager just bet on a few teams and just go from there um but obviously czech republic maybe got a slightly higher chance against denmark than ukraine have against england by the bookies so so Czech could go in uh, in midfield if you wanted to downgrade one of the players I, I don't think I would downgrade Lukaku I think I would want someone from Belgium in attack in that team and he looks like the best option and Munier obviously in defense is a good option too um, and, I, and I think Rata is the only one you can be I don't want to say this because he'll probably get dropped but he feels like the only attacker that's like a shorter starts at the moment so I think I would definitely have Morata. And I do think he's a great captaincy option for the first day. So you can maybe drop Kane instead. Uh, and then obviously for the forwards then, you've got Schick, possibly, you could put up front. Or like I said, you could put Yaramchuk if you want to back Ukraine instead. 
but that's a, just another way around you can go for it. You've still got a Switzerland player in Shakiri as well, and you've got Damsgaard from uh, Denmark, who takes up a midfield spot, which is what I really like. Obviously, if you go for like Paulson or um, Braithwaite, etc., they take up a forward slot, and I just don't think it's worth it. So in in the if Ukraine got through, right, it, with this way, right, you're covered with two from Denmark, two from Czech Republic. So no matter who goes through, you've got two. Then you've got two from Italy, Insigne and Spinazzola. You've got two from Belgium, Mounier or, uh, and Lukaku, sorry. So you get two from this. You've got at least four. Uh, and then you've got one from here as well. Obviously, you could get really screwed. And Ukraine win, Switzerland win. And then you're, you know, you're just almost down and out. But you have got five transfers to fix it. So I think you have to... I would go a bit more all-in. But if you wanted to spread the risk, then someone like Socek and Schick could be good options instead of like Kane and whoever I had in here. I can't remember. Uh, let me work it out by the price. Okay, who did I have in there? Oh, Sarabia, wasn't it? Yeah, something like that. I don't think there's too many other changes that I would make to this team. I just think Damsgaard and Mela are good value. Spinazzola is just so attacking, and Insigne is absolutely nailed on. You're not worried about Berardi or, or Chiesa or whoever starts on the other side. And I've talked a lot about Morata instead. And I just think the, the goalkeepers kind of pick themselves. If you wanted to go for an extra Danish player instead of four English players, then one of the moves you could do is Pickford to um, Schmeichel uh, instead. But I think I would just go for Pickford and maybe drop one of Sterling Kane or Stones if you're really unsure. Um, so I'd probably just put Pickford in there. I don't think I would make too many... Um, I don't think I would make too many changes for that. So that's what I would do. But like I said, going for some Ukraine players, maybe just one possibly two maybe one or two Czech Republic players would not be uh, a bad way to hedge your bets and not be completely screwed over but obviously in, in this scenario you're looking pretty damn good going into the semi-final so let me know below what you think of that wildcard team and which changes would you make there we go that is it for this one please do give it a like if you enjoyed it and hit that subscribe button if you're new around here like I said I'll go through my transfers tomorrow on the team selection video I can tell you now England and Morata are really top of the bill for the transfers that I'm making but I may bring Mounier in as well I'm definitely looking at a minus four I may take a minus eight as well I'm going to wait for that Spain team and I will be doing a deadline stream this weekend uh, sorry on Friday as well uh, I know I missed the last one but I have one for this week um, so we can wait for that Spain lineup and then I can make my transfers from there so hopefully the likes of Sarabia start just because he's so cheap but it could be Farron Torres and I might have to change around um, who I'm going for so keep an eye out for that but yeah hit a like on this one if you enjoyed it hit that subscribe button and I'll see you tomorrow for the team selection video